Hello everyone, I am Mary Trinity from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology and today we will study about the base excitation. Okay, so this is one of the uh, former part of the mechanical vibration, basically the post and the vibration of it. So let us study about the post vibration with respect to the base excitation. Now in this case, we do not need to consider any external force tends to apply on the system. We only need to assume that only once there is the external excitation. Now, by that, if there is the external excitation on the system and if the base is not mounted towards the surface, it means the surface of the uh, whole system is not uh, having any foundation. It can be like if you see in the system, uh, you can uh, imagine that suppose you have uh, your vehicle and your vehicle is not mounted on, uh, on its base, it is the moving object. Just like that, if any system having some, uh, uh, having, having any of the systems but it is not mounted on, on the surface. So, it is having the base which is uh, exactly not fixed to the surface. So, here in our case, we assume that there is any external force tends to apply on the system. So, by that application of the force, the mass will tend to move x direction uh, in a upward, in the upward position and the base will tend to move uh, exactly in the same manner but having the uh, displacement y. As we all know, displacement may differ from point to point. So, here mass m having x displacement and base is having y displacement. So, let us move this object towards y direction in the upward direction. So, here total system will move towards upward direction. Okay. So, uh, mass will move x displacement will have the x displacement. Spring and damper having some different displacement but the base is having y displacement. So, if we see this diagram just assume suppose this is a mass and will tend to move towards upward direction. Okay, so spring is rigidly fixed with respect to the mass, hence spring will also move with respect to the mass, hence it will elong. Damping, damper is also fixed to the mass, okay, so it will also elong, it will stretch, but because they both are connected with the base and by it reaction, the base will also move upward. Okay, so what will happen? The elongation of spring will not proper, it will not exactly as x, it will be x minus y. Okay, and elongation of the damper will also reduce. Okay, so because the total displacement will reduce by x minus y, we have to write uh, the equation in different manner. Now let us have the base displacement velocity and acceleration. So what is the displacement? It is capital Y sin omega t. Okay. The total displacement is small y. The equation of the displacement is y sin omega t. It is just simple as our uh, previously as we see in a simple harmonic motion. The standard displacement is capital X sin omega t. Okay, in our case, we are considering y sin omega t as the displacement of a base. Now, let us have the velocity of the base. So, it is y omega cos omega t. Okay, now we simply differentiate with respect to t and we are getting this kind of answer. Now, we differentiate this value and we will get the acceleration equation. So, what is the acceleration equation? It is y double dot known as the acceleration of the base and that value is minus y omega square sin omega t. Okay. So, now let us have the free body diagram. As you see in this free body diagram having the mass m and mass m will have the displacement x. So, what should be the acceleration? The inertia, inertia force will be in a downward direction and acceleration is x double dot. Okay. So, if the system will move towards upward direction, the acceleration should be in the downward direction. Hence, the total inertia force on the mass is mx double dot which is in the downward direction. Now, let us have the spring as well as damping forces. So, spring force is x k minus 1 in a downward and damping force is also c x dot minus y dot, it is also in the downward direction. Okay. Now, let us have, let us solve this equation. 
For this equation, we have to write the force calculation. So, what is the value? Mx double dot plus C x dot minus y dot plus K x minus y is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let us solve this equation further. What you can write? Mx double dot plus Cx dot minus Cy dot plus Kx minus Ky is equal to 0. Okay. Now, in our case, Cy dot is negative 1 and Ky is also the negative 1. Hence, we have to put it at the right hand side position. So, if we put all both the values in the right hand side position, what should be the equation? We will get mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to cy dot plus ky. Okay. Now, let us put the y dot and y value in our above equation. So, here y dot is y omega cos omega t. And what is y? It is y sin omega t. Let us put this equation, uh, put these values in our equation and we are getting it this way. Now, if you see this equation, y value is the common one. Okay. So, we have to common out it. So, so that we are getting mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to y c omega cos omega t plus k sin omega t. Now, as you see in our case, c omega and k. Okay, as we have already studied in our previous chapter, previous lecture that C omega is a damping force, X is the amplitude. Okay, K is the damping uh, spring stiffness, Kx is a spring force but X is a displacement. It means we have, we can get the equation with the help of C omega as well as K. So, let us have the diagram. C omega and K, they both are perpendicular to each other. Hence, we have to draw in this manner. And the angle between C omega and K is always alpha. Okay, as we have already take as, uh, taken as alpha value, which is the lag angle uh, in a force transmissibility lecture. So, here we will get the hypotenuse value as under root of K square plus C omega whole square. Okay. Now, by this uh, triangle, we can find out the sin alpha as well as cos alpha value. Okay. So, now let us have sin alpha as well as cos alpha value. So, what is sin alpha? It is C omega upon the hypotenuse which is uh, root of k square plus C omega whole square. Put the cos alpha. So, uh, by putting the values of uh, sides, we will get cos alpha value as k upon under root of hypotenuse value which is k square plus C omega whole square. Now, again, come back to our original equation. Now, if you see in sin alpha and cos alpha uh, equations, uh, we have some values like C omega as well as K. But what is missing? It is under root of, in the denominator, under root of K square plus C omega square is missing. Okay. So, what we need to do? We have to multiply and divide with the same value. Okay. So, now let us multiply and divide with the same value. The equation will not change at all. So, let us divide and multiply. It is y under root of k square plus c omega whole square upon under root of k square plus c omega whole square. Okay. Now, let us divide this k square plus c omega whole square, the divisional value inside the bracket. So, if we are putting the divisional value inside the bracket, what we will get? We will get the equation as y under root of k square plus c omega whole square bracket c omega upon under root of k square plus c omega whole square cos omega t plus k upon under root of k square plus c omega whole square sin omega t. Now check c omega upon k square plus c omega square. What is the value? It is sin alpha. Okay. And check k upon k square plus c omega whole square. What is the value? It is cos alpha. So, now let us put sin alpha as well as cos alpha value and by putting both of that values, we are getting this kind of equation. So, what is the equation? Y under root of k square plus c omega whole square sin alpha cos omega t plus cos alpha sin omega t. Okay. Now, if you remember this equation, it should be equal to sin omega t plus alpha. Okay. So, here by putting all these values, we will get the equation linear by equal to our standard force equation. Okay. So, now let us compare this equation 
with our standard force vibration equation. So if we compare it, what we will get? Instead of sin omega t, we will get sin omega t minus alpha. Okay. Instead of F0, we will get Y under root of K square plus C omega whole square. Now let us put this F0 value in a standard X equation. So what is the X equation? So X equation is F0 by K upon under root of 2 zeta omega by omega in whole square plus 1 minus omega by omega in square whole square. Now, instead of F0, we have to write Y under root of T square plus C omega whole square. Now, according to this, we will get the amplitude ratio as X by Y is equal to under root of 1 plus 2 zeta R whole square upon under root of 2 zeta R whole square plus 1 minus R square whole square. Now, here, uh, don't be confused in this equation. Just check the above equation. What it says? Under root of k square, which is divided by k square, it means 1. So, we write it as 1. Plus, c omega by k whole square. And what is c omega by k? It is 2 zeta omega by omega n. And what is omega by omega n? It is r. Hence, I directly write the equation as under root of 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square. Okay, so this equation is known as motion transmissibility. As you see, it is similar as transmissibility equation, whether it is the force transmission or motion transmission. Okay, so both the equation are similar and the solution also are the similar one. Okay, so this is our theory of base excitation. Now let us have a relative amplitude theory. Student, this theory is very very helpful in seismometer or the machinery is having some or uh, having the measuring uh, characteristics for the particularly vibration. So here we have to consider the relative amplitude. It is none other than the same equation having same diagram. If there is a mass, there is a spring and a damper having the base which is not fixed to the uh, surface. So, if it is movable, it will move in the upper direction having y amplitude. Mass will move in the upper direction having x amplitude. It is just same as our previous theory. Okay. So, now let us assume z is the relative amplitude. So, what is the z? z which is the difference between x minus y. Okay. So, now z is equal to x minus y. What we can write? Z dot is equal to X dot minus Y dot. And what is Z double dot? It is X double dot minus Y double dot. Okay. So now let us have our free body diagram like this. There is the structure, machine structure. If the machine structure will move in the upper direction, what is the inertia force? So the inertia force will tend to uh, act in the downward direction which is MX double dot. Now, with respect to the spring and damper, base will also move towards the upper direction. So, what is the total displacement of the spring? It is x minus y. And what is the total velocity which is tend to act on the damping? So, it is x dot minus y dot. Okay. So, now let us put or solve this force vibration equation. Okay. Now, we have already assumed that z is equal to x minus y. So that we can write x minus y as z and x dot minus y dot as z dot. So let us solve this equation. This equation will be like mx double dot plus ax dot minus y dot plus kx minus y is equal to 0. So that we can write this equation as mz double dot plus y double dot. How this will come? Because we have already studied that z double dot is equal to x double dot minus y double dot. Okay, so that minus y double dot will come back to the, uh, in the positive side, in the left hand side. So that we will get m z double dot plus y double dot plus c z dot plus k z is equal to 0. Okay, so now by solving this equation, what we will get? m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z is equal to minus m y double dot. Now let us put the y double dot value in our equation. What we will get? We will get the final solution as m y omega square sin omega t. 
If you check this equation with our previous uh, force damped by equation equation, it is nearly same. We will get F0 as m by omega square. Now let us have the standard equation. So instead of x, what we need to write? Z. So we have to write z is equal to m by omega square by k upon under root of 2 zeta omega by omega and whole square plus 1 minus omega by omega and square whole square. Okay. So if we need to solve this equation, what is the equation? Finally, z by y. So here in, in this case, if you see m omega square by k. So m by k is 1 upon omega n square. So that we can write omega by omega n whole square. And what is omega by omega n whole square? It is r square. So here relative amplitude equation we are getting as z by y is equal to r square upon under root of 2 zeta r whole square plus 1 minus r square whole square. Okay. So we have already studied about two equation. First one is the vibration due to base excitation and second one due to relative motion okay so the both of these theories are very very important uh, according to the our examination point of view as well as they are also used in the new matter okay thank you